Let me call you back together again, please. We need to start in about just one minute, so please find your seats and uh, we'll convene in 43 seconds. Please, if there are people still outside, tell them we're getting to, we're going to start. So it is now my honor to introduce our final speaker of the day, the Honorable Virginia Fox, who represents North Carolina's 5th District in the U.S. House of Representatives. She currently serves as the chairwoman of the House Committee on Education and the Workforce. From 2013 to 2016, she served as secretary of the House Republican Conference. Dr. Fox is a graduate of the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill, where she received her AB degree in English, MACT in Sociology, and she earned her Doctor of Education in Curriculum and Teaching Higher Education from the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. It's a busy day on the Hill, so we very much appreciate uh, her coming to see us. Please join me in welcoming Congressman Virginia Fox. Thank you, Dr. Lane. I appreciate that. He uh, actually got all my degrees right, I think. It's a, uh, sometimes a complicated one. Well, uh, we, Today is a Wednesday, and I probably should never accept an off-campus invitation on a Wednesday because of the hectic schedule we have, and I apologize if I have to literally run out the door before I'm finished because we, we're, we're going to have a vote in about 25, well, in about 45 minutes, and it was a challenge getting up here today. But I want to thank you very much for inviting me to come. Uh, you know, I am in, in many ways uh, a frustrated academic. Um, I thought I was going to make my living in education, which is why I went the route that I went. Um, and so I miss it, uh, frankly. And I've never been in this building before. I, I work from early in the morning till late at night and don't get a chance to go places um, around Washington. So one of the nice things about coming to an event like this is seeing this seeing a building like this so i thank um i thank tom rudin and the others who invited me and the last thing i have to tell you is that i had just had a god moment a year ago i had a reporter from politico uh, follow me around for two days in my district and one of the things we did was go to a parade in ash county and the parade is again this Saturday, and I was thinking I needed to write her a note and say, I'll be at the parade again. You want to come and go with me? And she's here and spoke to me. <laughs> Can you believe it? So anyway, thank you all very much. Um, my understanding is that you all are interested in how universities need to be more adaptable to the changing workforce needs of the 21st century. Well, I'm just one mere mortal who has an opinion on that. There's a lot more brain power in this room than I have, and I suspect you're, you're going to deal with some of that issue yourselves, but I'll be happy to share with you um, some, of, some of my observations. As the chairwoman of the Education and Workforce Committee in the House of Representatives, I spend just about every waking moment thinking about education and workforce issues. Um, and let me, um, as I said before, I thought that I would be in post-secondary education. I started out wanting to be a high school English teacher, but I was too poor to quit work and do student teaching. So I wound up getting a master's in college teaching and a doctorate in curriculum in college teaching. Before though, I, while I was working at Carolina, I worked in the pathology department in research on hemophilia. And I've always been very grateful for having had that experience um, because it's been very instructive to me over the years in understanding what happens uh, in research universities. 
Um, I spent 15 years at Appalachian State University where we didn't do a lot of research, but we did some. So I know, um, I know how difficult but important it is for universities and colleges to keep up with changing times. And I, if I could be a little blunt, I don't think we've been doing as good a job recently as we could have. Right now, there are 6.1 million unfilled jobs in this country. These jobs are unfilled because too many American workers are unskilled, and we should have seen this coming. Please humor an old sociology instructor for a moment. Back in 1970, and there may not be too many people here who were reading in 1970, but Alvin Toffler published a book called Future Shock. It was really a prediction for the future. Toffler talked a lot about transience and permanence, but some of his observations about education and the future workforce were simple and dead on. One observation Toffler made is really on my mind lately as the committee prepares not to reauthorize, but to reform the Higher Ed Act. He said, it would be a mistake to assume that the present day educational system is unchanging. On the contrary, it is undergoing change. But much of this change is no more than an attempt to refine the existent machinery, making it even, ever more efficient in pursuit of obsolete goals. When I read the reference to obsolete goals, I think about so many students finishing baccalaureate or graduate programs with mounds of debt and no job prospects. Toffler had an answer though. He pointed out something Herbert Gurjoy had said, that we're wrong to focus on teaching people how to simply read and write. We have to teach people how to learn, unlearn, and relearn. We have to rethink education, not because it sounds good, but because the American people are rethinking education also. A Wall Street Journal NBC News poll in September said 49% of Americans believe a four-year degree will actually lead to a good job and pay. 47% of Americans aren't so sure college is worth it anymore. That's something everyone in this room needs to keep in mind. It's a funny thing when you become a committee chair, a lot more people <laughs> want to come in and see you and tell you what they're doing. So, I'm learning about a lot of solutions that are being put in place in our country to help educate a skilled workforce, and most of them are not coming from the university. One of the points that I'm very passionate about is that not everyone needs a baccalaureate degree. Now, I love my degrees. I worked hard to get them, and frankly, I'd like for everybody to be lifelong learners like you all are and like I think I am. We want lifelong learners in this country, and I don't want anybody to ever think that I'm opposed to that. But it doesn't mean that, again, because I'm passionate that not everyone needs a baccalaureate degree, I don't mean to say that no one needs a baccalaureate degree. I certainly did for what I wanted to do, and I assume all of you did. So where do universities fit into this discussion about equipping the workforce? I've heard two examples recently from my home state in North Carolina. One is from Wake Forest University, which is in my district, and I'm sure most of you know there may be, are there any Wake Forest people here today? There might be. It has a college to career passport tool that prompts students to track their potential career interest over the course of their programs and learn how to market themselves to employers. UNC uh, Chapel Hill's Coven Carolina Covenant has helped 6,000 high achieving students who wouldn't have been able to go to Carolina because of cost finish their programs debt free using work study mentoring and academic support programs. I am an extremely devoted fan of dual enrollment and really believe it makes all the difference to people who know they want a baccalaureate degree but may or may not be able to get it done 
in a timely and cost-effective way. I believe that we are wasting the time of a lot of people who want to go on to get a baccalaureate degree and many who want to go on to a community college by forcing them to take courses the junior and senior years in high school and repeating much of that work the freshman and sophomore years in college. One of the biggest things that I think we can all keep in mind is that all education is career education. Again, I'm working very hard on the language that we use because we talk about career and technical education when we're really talking about people who go to two-year schools. But is there anybody in here who got your baccalaureate degree and didn't want a job afterwards? So, for Americans pursuing an AAS, BS, BA, MA, MS, MD, PhD, EDD, or any other sequence of letters, you may find out there the goal is a good job that leads to a successful life. So we're right now working very hard in the committee to introduce legislation, as I said, that will reform, not simply reauthorize the Higher Ed Act. You'll be hearing more about this and what those reforms look like in the next days and weeks. But it should come as no surprise to you as we work to improve access and completion for students of all ages, we're doing so with the end result in mind. People pursue education beyond high school to equip themselves for a better life. And they're the reason we're here. The fact that you all want to address these changing workforce needs is extremely encouraging to me. So I would encourage you to go home, talk with local industries, talk with local workforce development groups, and set your minds to creating models for communities of every size across the country to follow. I promise you that I'm gonna do my part and help my colleagues do our part to lay the groundwork and to back you up in what it is you're doing. But we can't, the answers are not in Washington, D.C. The answers are out there in the country. What we can provide is the framework and hopefully no obstacles to you to do what needs to be done. So thank you very much for the work that you do. Thank you for being dedicated to learning being dedicated to science, being dedicated to making the world a better place to live. My colleagues and I believe that's what we're doing too. So God bless you all and thank you very much. Thank you very much, Congresswoman, Chair, Chairwoman Fox, for your comments and all you're doing for higher education and research.